Most Tuesdays, I run early in the morning with a woman named Meredith. For such close friends, we're quite different. Meredith is a voluble social worker who draws energy from crowds. I'm an introverted writer and editor who works from home. Meredith runs her best in large races and loves training with big groups. I've set personal records, PRs, in solo time trials and tend to bail when a run's headcount gets above five. Meredith is a worrier, beset by regrets and worries, who has sought treatment for anxiety. I have dysthymia, chronic low-grade depression. We like to joke that Meredith stays up late to avoid the next day, whereas I go to bed early to speed the arrival of a better tomorrow. We do have one key thing in common. Meredith and I run primarily for our mental health. Since our teens, we've leaned on regular running to improve the underlying fabric of our lives, our friendships, our marriages, our careers, our odds of being something other than miserable most of the time. Sure, we race, we enjoy the basic motion of running, and we appreciate being fit, lean, and in good physical health. But the main draw of our 75-minute pre-work loop is that we finish it feeling as if we've hit reset and can better handle the rest of the day. Finishing a run in a better mood is a near-universal experience. It's so common, in fact, that you can buy t-shirts and mugs that read, Running is my therapy. Many people list psychological benefits among their top reasons to run. For those of us with depression or anxiety, however, our relationship to the mental side of the sport is often deeper. We view running's brain benefits the same way that cardiac patients might especially value running's effect on heart health. The daily boosts are wonderful and welcome, but not the whole picture. Experts are still working out the explanation to what Meredith and I and millions of others have discovered. Without regular running, our psychological set point will plummet. I was diagnosed with dysthymia in 1995, soon after I turned 30. What I described to the psychiatrist that day, however, had been a regular presence in my life since my teens. Starting in middle school, the unease I'd felt as a child gelled into what began to feel like basic aspects of my personality, low-grade disappointment about how little pleasure life delivers in comparison to the work it requires, pining for but seldom finding meaning in events and relationships, having to rally myself to find the mental and physical energy just to tend to daily affairs. One of the great blessings of my life is discovering running soon after these symptoms took up residence. In the spring of 1979, as a ninth grader, I started running to prepare for high school cross-country the following fall. I was immediately hooked. Running was the first thing that combined day-to-day -day pleasure with the feeling of working towards something meaningful.